Hey guys, it's Paolo. I'm gonna do a little rig rundown for you all. I'm gonna start with my base, uh, sort of work through the source of everything. This is a Kiesel Vanquish. I started using them about just over, or just under two years, I think. Uh, but this is a custom shop, maple on the top. This is a walnut in this part of the body. Um, I think the neck is also maple. Walnut in the back. Super, super killer uh, wide range of EQ. These radial humbuckers get a lot of high end. I like to put a ton of high end into it. I let Woody up front kind of cut things as he needs, but I, I like to hear that in my ears. Uh, which kind of leads me to the next thing, since I'm really into the high end. Um, Dunlop made me a custom set of my own strings, which will be coming out soon. Uh, the, the big benefit of this over just the stainless steel is the nickel wound that they put around it kind of saves my fingers because stainless steel can kind of rip your fingers up pretty bad, but they sound good. So they found a way to kind of get both things I needed, which is to save my hands a little bit, but get the tone I wanted. And the combo of these strings, this bass, is exactly the tone I've been after. Um, I've always been able to get a good tone out of things, but I'm really, really pleased with this one. Uh, and then holding this thing up is my custom Richter strap, handmade. They do leather, they do vegan leather, so if you want a uh, whatever kind of strap you want, they make. And the one thing I like is that it's able to be adjustable here. I don't know if you can see it on here, but uh, that's always a very nice thing since we all uh, like to put our straps at different lengths. So let me hand this off here and then we'll go over to the Kemper. All righty. All right, so here's the fun stuff here. Um, so I'll start with the Kemper. Basically, Kemper Profiler, for anyone that doesn't know, you can get tones of real amps digitally made into these profiles that go into this computer looking thing here. Um, I didn't profile a real amp uh, myself, but I literally, when I got this, I went on to the forum at Kemper. I found an Ampeg and I tried it out and I liked it a lot. And that's been the one I've been using for years. And I actually went back to the forum recently and the file's not there anymore. It's like a dead link. So I probably have the last of it. Uh, and so when people ask me about the profile, I'm like, well, as long as I can keep these running is as long as I'll keep this tone, I guess. Uh, because it is not there anymore. Uh, what else are we running in here? Got our fancy Sure. It says 8040. Um, really with like wireless systems and stuff. I mean, this is like a top of the line one. The signal is super clear. You don't have like a super big drop off with the volume. Uh, I mean, if you plug in with a cable, you're always going to get perfect full signal. There's always a little bit of tone and signal you will lose with these, but not really much. I don't ever notice too much of a difference, and it's not as noticeable as like the lower end models. Um, let's go to here. This is my, uh, if you can come in a little closer with these. This is my uh, pedal board. I don't really use too many effects. Um, most songs don't have anything. The one thing that's always running is this EBS multiband compressor. What a multiband compressor can do, uh, if you'd like to on this one, is basically if you want to like just compress low end and not have any of your high end touched by the compression, you can set it at like basically wherever you want in the spectrum of things. Um, for me, I don't really do that with this. I just like the way that just having the compression on sounds, it just gives it like this extra harmonics makes the notes ring a certain way. Josh Wilbur, who has produced and mixed our last few records, told me about this thing. He's been using it on our records, and that's how I discovered it. And it's a really killer piece of gear. It's not too much money. Um, EBS Sweden, little Swedish made pedal. Uh, and then this is the Dark Glass Duality. Um, Dark glass has really gotten popular in the last few years for bass players. I see a lot of dudes using their stuff. I use this duality for any fuzz distortion parts. I like that I can blend not only the fuzz and like saw sounding distortion, I can also blend in the clean signal. Um, and it doesn't really lose a lot of the clarity 
when I'm using it, especially with the wah pedal. Um, you know, it's kind of preference with those things, uh, but this one's definitely one of the best fuzz pedals I've used. And I've been trying for years and years to get one that didn't lose any of the clarity, but still had a lot of that nasty distortion that I'm looking for. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. The white Dunlop bass wah. It's pretty classic standard wah that Dunlop makes. It has the frequencies and stuff that you can mess with here, the Q and all that stuff. Um, it's a classic for a reason. It works really well. I've not really had any problems with this one. I've always loved that I don't have to click on the wah like the guitars do. That's one thing us bass players have over the guitar wahs. They just turn right on. And with this duality, it's the perfect combo with you know anything from Becoming the Dragon solo, Torn Between solo, or like Beginning of Throne, Throne Into the Fire, works perfectly. Simple, nothing too crazy. Got the power source here, the MXR. Uh, got the Furman power. It's a pretty simple rig. I try to keep things easy, something that I can fly with. Uh, when we do our overseas runs, like or down in South America and stuff, I'll probably have one of these with me, and then like a backup DI, like Ampeg thing or something. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of your playing comes from the basses you use, the strings, the way you play it. If you put me on some other rig, I could probably get close enough to where it wouldn't be too far off. But you know, when I can have exactly what I want, this is exactly what I need. So very simple, but I hope you enjoyed it.